Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to Tiny Lines Big World, Day 3 Recap, Barcelona. Yesterday we had a really rough day. But today it was a lot better, I have to say. Uh, I didn't get any more sleep, um, so let's see. Let's talk about what happened. Last night was brutal. Emma woke up a bunch of times. I ended up actually going in to their room and sleeping in her bottom bunk while Eli slept on the top bunk, figuring that if she was going to sleep in the bed with Kim, that rather than three people be in one bed and one person be in the other, it was probably better for me to be in there with him. He was also yelling out in his sleep a bunch, so I thought I'd be in there to comfort him. Well, you know, I was, and we did it, but... He woke up a bunch of times, she woke up a bunch of times, he yelled out a bunch of times, and the end result is mom and dad got no sleep. So the alarm went off at 7 o'clock this morning because we had tickets for Sagrada Familia at 9 a.m. And uh, wow, 7 a.m. hit me like a ton of bricks. I got up with a massive headache and immediately sucked down a sort of pre-made mocha coffee that I grabbed at a, a Veritas the night before. Veritas is a, is a market, it's a like a a small supermarket. I grabbed those thinking, well, at least we'll have coffee here because we have a Bialetti espresso maker, but it's broken. So, uh, you know, Kim and I, the first day had a really rough start with no coffee here at the place. So we thought, well, we'd grab these for coffee. Well, I sucked it down and it immediately made my stomach hurt. So now I had a searing headache that was nearly debilitating and my stomach felt funky because I just sucked down coffee on an empty stomach. Good times abound. So it took us about an hour to get out of here. I was finally starting to feel a little bit better when we left, but I basically forced myself out of the apartment. Kim was already stressed to the max, trying to get them all ready. So just walking out the door this morning was tough, but we did a level set with them before we walked out the door and we sat them down and we said, look, here's what's happening. Here's the order in which we're doing things, but we're flexible and we go with the flow. And in fact, that's been my mantra with the kids. I'm trying to get them to understand that plans change. So I keep saying to them, we're flexible. We go with the flow. We got out the door. Uh, we got down to Sagrada. Uh, you know, I think once the kids got out of the apartment, they felt a lot better about things. So we walked down the street. We're only, I don't know, seven or eight blocks from Sagrada Familia. So uh, we walked down there and got in line and, you know, we made our, our time. And Sagrada Familia was mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. It was exceptional. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. And Eli kept saying the same thing. So we talked a lot about he and I. Um, we have been to St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. So we talked about that and the differences. You know, hey, what's different about that versus what's different about Sagrada Familia? And we're going to another major famous city. And I'm not quite going to tell you yet because it's kind of a surprise. And we're going to see another world famous church and uh, we're going to compare the differences between the Modernista church and the Renaissance church and this Gothic cathedral that we're going to see. So homeschooling at its best, you know, this is what we do. Everything is a lesson. We've been studying Gaudi for months prior to this trip and just pounding it into his head. And it's really stuck. He was really incredible at Sagrada. And actually Emma was also. Um, she immediately remembered the church rules. I said, you know, this is a church. Do you remember the rules? She said, be quiet. And I said, yep. So they are both on extremely good behavior all through Sagrada. And Sagrada was breathtakingly beautiful, stunning, all of those things. You know, the thing that left, I think, the most impression on me was that there's not an angle that you look at the church, that there isn't something interesting to look at. And so many pictures that you see are from that the front of the one side that you don't get to see any of the other faces. Now, I, I understand it's still under construction, but there's so much more to see. That, and I was not expecting the color. There's color on the outside up on the pinnacles. There's like little fruit gatherings up on top of some of them and, and there's color splashed in there. And then when you get inside the, the stained glass windows, I've, I've just never experienced anything like it. It, it was so worth doing and I can't wait until uh, they're finished. I, hopefully I'll live long enough to see it finished. They're shooting for 2026. So maybe Barcelona 2026 is the way to go. We spent a fair amount of time at Sagrada, at least 
an hour, maybe a little longer. And went through the whole thing, then went down, saw the, in the crypt they have the, um, some of the original models. I think most of the original models don't exist anymore. They only have fragments, so they've reconstructed the models with fragments. But you kind of learn about Gaudi, and you learn about the church, and how it was started, and get to see some of the early designs and stuff. So that was, it was really great. The whole experience was great, and totally worth the nominal fee we paid to get in. It was like $20, 20 euros, less than that. You can look it up and find the actual fee. You know, the kids were free. It was so worth doing. I highly recommend it. Absolutely a must-see. And, and I hate using that term, but it really was. I'm no student of architecture or anything, but, you know, it's, it's clear, as I said in my recap video yesterday, how just dramatically different anything he did was from anybody else. So, yeah, so Sagrada was good. And everybody really enjoyed it. So after we got out of there, we stepped across the street and we went to... We were going to head to the McDonald's. So the original plan was we were going to get up in the morning. We were going to have breakfast at the McDonald's across the street from Sagrada and then head over. But we got there. McDonald's was closed at 8 a.m. Which... Okay, I'm from the United States, so I don't really understand that because McDonald's is kind of open all the time. But I suppose it makes sense for Europeans who don't really care about... McDonald's, why would it matter to them? I was more surprised that they weren't open at like 8 or 8.30 for people like us who were going to get in at Sagrada Familia. But whatever. So they weren't open. So we didn't really eat anything until after we were done with Sagrada. And by that point, the kids were starting to lose their minds. So we stopped into a place and we had churros and chocolate. And the churros and chocolate were awesome. And we had a couple of cappuccinos. It totally, you know, brought our spirits up. Obviously, the kids did not have cappuccinos. You know, the churros, uh, it was really interesting. They were very plain. And I don't mean that in a bad way. The churros that I've had in the States, while delicious, are overly sweet with all the cinnamon and sugar and everything. Whereas these were deep fried with a light coating of sugar. And then you have the chocolate, the big mug of chocolate to dip it in. And the chocolate wasn't overly sweet either. Kim remarked that you definitely got the chocolatey flavor, but it wasn't like super, super sweet, sweet milk chocolate. Yeah, so it was really tasty, but, and it filled us up. We each got two churros that were, you know, maybe that big. Uh, there was like four churros on a plate, and so we got two plates. We each had two, and I was full before I even finished the second one. So it was, it was good. Even though it was a super touristy spot, the food was solid, the people were really nice, and it was delicious, and we went on our way. So then we headed back. Kim had a plan. We were going to go to the shopping district in Gracia, which is where we're staying. And if I'm saying it wrong, again, I apologize. My pronunciation sucks most of the time. So we're staying in the Gracia neighborhood. Kim wanted to go to the shopping street, the kind of artist district there, because she wanted to like look for some clothes. She also had this uh, Catalan restaurant in mind. So we kind of came back to the apartment, regrouped a little bit, figured out the details for lunch, and found the place opened at 1. So we headed out again, and we got there at about 1.15. Waited for less than 10 minutes and had a seat. And we got there at exactly the right time, because about 15 minutes after we sat down, a line formed outside the place. Now, the food was outstanding. And we deliberately went there because they specialize in Catalan cuisine, and we had read that they were highly rated in something. I don't know, Kim has all the details. I just kind of do what I'm told in these situations. And uh, But hey, you know, that's why I married her, because she makes the good decisions, and I don't have to. So let's see, we ordered, um, they had a special. The daily special was a starter plate, a main plate, a dessert, all for 12 euros. So we got two of those. So two main plates, two starter plates, and two desserts. We got ourselves some kava, which was quite delicious, I have to say. Not quite champagne, still a bubbly bubbly wine drink, but uh, very, very tasty and, and still unique. So we got some of that. The first couple of plates that we got, let's see, we got this sort of a daily vegetable with white fish with some olive oil, and it had some little bit of garlic, a little bit of onion, and it was really, really tasty. I tend to not be a fish guy, and I don't eat a lot of fish at home. I don't eat a lot of shellfish. I just don't really like the texture. This was delicious. And I have to say, I'm really impressed by the fish markets here. Everyone said that the fish was really fresh and that these markets didn't smell fishy, and I couldn't quite comprehend that because it's all I knew. And they're absolutely right. I don't know any other way to describe it. It smells like the ocean. It smells like you're, you know, you were on a fishing boat earlier, you know, that fishing kind of ocean smell, fish coming out of the water, the whole thing. I mean, I grew up on the coast in Connecticut, so I'm real familiar with lobster 
traps and you know that kind of a smell of fishermen so it was like lightly smelled like that but it didn't stink and i've been to some markets that really stunk you know you go to chinatown in oakland california or in san francisco and some of those shops just reek of fish and not in a way that is appealing to me anyway i i don't speak for anybody else i only speak for my own opinions so I was really blown away by how clean everything smelled and how beautiful the presentation was, but you weren't assaulted by the smell upon walking in. It was like, oh, it smells like fish in a very pleasant way, which I normally wouldn't associate that smell with something pleasant. So anyway, so the white fish vegetable thing was quite delicious. And um, the other thing we ordered was a tomato salad with pesto, which was outstanding. It was outstanding. The tomatoes were just ridiculous. Both the kids loved the tomatoes. And the combination of the olive oil and that the pesto was, it was light without being obtrusive. I don't know how else to describe it. It very much complemented the salad and kind of brought out the flavor. You got a nice pesto-y aftertaste. But it wasn't overpowering. It wasn't heavy. Really classy dish. So then our second plates came and we got a sort of a mixed seafood. I think it was mostly fish, but it had a, a clam on there and some potatoes and peas. And then we got a sausage, house sausage with white beans. They're both astonishingly good. Again, I'm not a fish person. Both the kids like the fish. I like the fish. You know, the sausage was so good, and yet it was kind of overpowering until you had it with the beans, which were kind of plain on their own. But the combination of the two took the dish to another place. You know, the beans evened out the sausage. It was really simple. It was just a one sausage and a like some fava beans or something. And it was incredible. It was fantastic. So then we had our choice for dessert. So we got um, crema catalana because we, you know, Kim is a huge creme brulee fan. So we needed to do the crema catalana. And they almost didn't have it, but at the last minute they had it. So we managed to get it. And then we ordered another, it was sort of an almond cake that you poured wine over. It was like a really dark, dark red wine. You know, I know that there's like a negra wine that either Spain or, or Catalonia is known for. I would assume this was that. We didn't ask. We should have. I meant to. Forgot. It was really delicious. With the wine, it was really strong. So I gave Eli like a bite with some of the wine soaked crumbs and some of the, like we split the piece in half and gave the un wined half to the kids and poured wine on the half for us. So I gave him a little by some of the crumbs and even he was like, I get overpowered his senses. But it was so unique and I mean, who pours wine on dessert? Well, clearly the Catalans do. Where's this been my whole life? And so the lunch was spectacular. And so at that point, you know, we kind of walked outside. Uh, yeah, our goal today was to not come back to the apartment and let people nap. We wanted to really push the kids today to get them tired because gosh darn it tonight, they're gonna sleep. At least that's the goal. <laughs> oh, fingers crossed. So we left the restaurant and we kind of started to wander. We were in a different part of Gracia than we had been before and we just kind of wandered around through the streets and we ended up finding our way to the sort of shopping strip that Kim had identified. You know, it was a little help from Google Maps and a little bit of wanderlust and we ended up getting there, which was great. Kim got a few outfits um, that looked beautiful on her, God bless her. And we met a really nice lady at the shop and had a great little time. And then we headed in the direction of uh, Casa Vincenz or Vicenz, or Anthony Gaudi, you know, the guy, the architect guy that everybody talks about? Yeah, I mentioned him a couple times. Anyway, it's one of his houses. And the cool thing about that is that there were like no tourists. We were the only people, maybe there's one or two other people looking and taking pictures. But for as much as Casa Batlo was a madhouse of people, and I can only imagine that Casa Mila would be the similar or the same, uh, since it's just up the street. Casa Vincenzo was nearly unoccupied. I mean, it was just as gorgeous in a totally different way. It was very Moroccan-inspired with the mosaics and the tiling and stuff. But yeah, it was wild. So that was wonderful. We stopped and got some gelato after that. And then uh, I was back to the metro because the kids decided that they were pooped and wanted to head home. So, you know, we headed to the metro. We had a couple of diversions, you know, a little girl had to have make an emergency bathroom break. We had to go to a donor kebab place and ask to use the bathroom without buying anything. I'm sure they were annoyed at that. Unfortunately, it was an emergency and we thanked them profusely. Uh, and even said emergency, a guy kind of rolled his eyes at us. Look, I know we're tourists. 
not buying anything, asking to use the restroom. But the only consolation I can take is that it was for a four-year-old and it was an emergency. So hopefully everybody understands that four-year-olds can't hold their bladders and otherwise, eh. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, then we took the metro and we realized that it was like 6.30 uh, when we got on the metro. And so we had just like totally burned the whole afternoon. It was great. And, you know, the kids were really good in spite of getting tired and, and Emma kind of pooping out. By the time we were heading to this metro, you know, they were they were really, really, really well behaved. That was a huge change from yesterday. I think for all of us. Woo! ice cream and gelato when we started to get back towards the apartment she was starting to fade so she started to get a little forgetful and not paying attention and not listening and you know we ended up having some issues this evening but overall it was it was a, a success i mean whatever that happens that's that's nighttime for the kids and, you know we got them back here and we had stopped through our our local market to pick up a few things to just have them for dinner. So we, you know, forcibly fed them dinner, much to Emma's chagrin. Not forcibly, but, you know, we, we had to get them to eat, and Emma doesn't like eating. So I jest, but no, we're not shoving food down their, their throats. Just, it's a challenge sometime, and anybody that has a four-year-old probably understand. Anyway. It was a bumpy evening, but not nearly as bumpy as yesterday, so I'm counting it a success. Overall, it was a great day. It was a really, really good day. Had a nice walk, saw all sorts of things we wouldn't have seen, met some really nice people, had some cool adventures. Oh, side note. So um, when we were walking on the way from lunch to Casa Vincenzo, we stopped in this uh, plaza, this open plaza that had a playground. God bless you, Barcelona, for having playgrounds every other block. And we ran to another couple. And they had recently, I think in, in this past April, had sold their house and quit their jobs and had taken a road trip across the United States and then flown to Europe and had been in Europe for the last eight weeks. And they had just arrived in Barcelona yesterday. Yesterday. And man, we had a grand old time talking to them. I really enjoyed ha chopping it up with them. Obviously, being homeschooling, traveling people, they were very like-minded and we kind of got along right away. But it was really interesting to get their take on things and places they had been and what they liked and what things they liked about Barcelona having only been there for a day. And as I told them, it was really nice to have another conversation and not have to work so hard. Uh, so that was great. And, and they had uh, two little girls. One was four and the other was, what was her age? Oh, four and seven. I didn't even realize they were exactly the same age. So, yeah, two little girls, four and seven. Eli and Emma are four and seven. Yeah, they're, apparently they're like a month apart, says Kim, in the background mumbling so that no one can hear her. So, uh, that was spectacular, and we're going to go to Park Well with them on Sunday. So we made another play date. So, woo, for making friends in a new country that are American. Figures, we got to come halfway around the world to meet new friends that are from the San Francisco Bay Area. I guess that's the way the world works. Anyway, so that was our day today. Uh, I'm gonna head to bed pretty soon, I'm pretty pooped. Tomorrow, we're gonna try to hit La Rambla again and actually give it its due. Um, we didn't get very far on it because it was just so mobbed with tourists. I, I just, I can't stand trying to thread my way through crowds like that, especially with the kids. So we basically only walked it as far as we needed to to get to the Boqueria and then we bounced. The plan is if if the kids wake up in time, because I'm not setting an alarm for tomorrow, not after this morning. If the kids get up in time, we'll kind of head down a little rambla and do that. Uh, I still want to eat at Kim's at, at the Boqueria. So we'll see. We'll play it by ear. In fact, in about 24 hours, you'll have a recap from me again. Doing the same thing, with the same lighting, in the same crazy corner, in Barcelona. Thank you for joining. I really hope you liked the video. I hope you subscribe and check us out on Facebook and like the video and share it with your buddies and run down the street screaming Tiny Lions Big World, the awesomest people in the whole entire universe. Maybe not the last one, or maybe so if you're daring. So, thanks a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.